Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be paying tribute to my favorite fish that I've ever kept and tell the awesome story of my friend Jack. So, let's dive right in. So I do need to start the video with some unfortunate news. My Jack Dempsey did pass away. I believe it was over natural causes and he lived a really long and full life and his story is really something to behold. So growing up, me and my brothers were raised in the fish keeping hobby with my dad's cichlid tanks. Our longtime family pet was the chocolate cichlid. We absolutely loved that guy and it probably seeded our interest in cichlids a long time ago. However, as time went on and we went to college, I temporarily fell out of the hobby as Troy and Alec are kind of on and off. They did hold some community tanks and even a goldfish tank, but nowhere close to the setups that we have today. That all changed when I got my first full-time teaching job at the current high school that I'm still at now. I was very lucky and felt fortunate to get hired at such an awesome school in the south suburbs of Chicago. However, it was an unfortunate situation for the teacher before me who passed away suddenly and unexpectedly, leaving behind his science position and his aquariums. In my first week at my new school, an email went out asking if anyone wanted to take over his last aquarium that he had in his classroom. My mind immediately jumped back to my childhood and I jumped on this opportunity to take over this aquarium. However, I didn't know exactly what I was getting myself into. The aquarium that I inherited was a 20 gallon long that I don't think had been touched for months. Literally the water level was about halfway full. There was cloudy debris all in the water. You could really hardly even see Jack in the aquarium. There was a little shell that he was kind of curled up into. But eventually, as I filled up the aquarium and cleaned it out a little bit, he did come out of the shell and I was able to correctly identify what type of cichlid he was. So once I figured out what type of cichlid I had on my hands, I immediately dove straight back into the hobby, just like I was as a kid. I cleaned the tank inch by inch. I found new filtration. I made sure that the water parameters were kind of getting back to the normal levels. And ultimately, I got the 20 gallon long looking pretty good. I went through a variety of different scape changes, some of which I'm a little embarrassed about, so don't make fun of me. But ultimately, this aquarium started to look pretty good. And I was really happy that Jack was out and about and he was active. And I was right back into the hobby doing tons of research. As I'm sure most of you have probably experienced in the hobby, I immediately got multiple tank syndrome. So I got a empty 29 gallon aquarium from one of the science storage rooms. I was able to set up Jack a whole new tank scape and also get him his first tank mates, which were two juvenile convict cichlids. So throughout this whole process, Troy and Alec were also highly invested in the rescuing of Jack. They eventually got their own setups at their homes and we started Cichlid Bros. So as it typically goes in this hobby, we got more setups and larger tanks. And this is when the legend of Jack really started to grow. So I set up this 75 gallon tank behind me here with the dark substrate. And the dark substrate was the game changer. Jack's coloration just exploded with all the blues, greens, purples, and even some reds. This just made Jack into an absolute showstopper. Also, I got some new tank mates along with the two convicts. I got a green terror or a gold som. Also, I got an awesome, beautiful Salvini. Uh, the last thing I did to finish out this tank is I got some giant danios that were kind of swimming up on the top to be a, more of a dither fish. But this is probably the best setup that I've ever had. And I really do miss this tank. And it might be an inspiration for a new project I have coming up in the classroom. So the next setup that I moved Jack into is my 110 gallon custom aquarium. So I moved all the fish from the 75 into the 110 minus the Salvini. The Salvini unfortunately got super aggressive, so I had to rehome her. But I was really excited that because it's not the true black dark substrate in the 110 gallon, that Jack still maintained his coloration and still looked awesome. So the last stop along the way for Jack was back into the 75 gallon here as more of a retirement tank. I knew he was pushing around seven years and he was starting to slow down a little bit. So I wanted to give him the most peaceful setup. He did end up passing away in this tank. I like to believe he died peacefully in his sleep. Um, but I like to look at this as more of a celebration of life because he really did live that full life. And I'm so happy that I was able to share the journey on this channel. 
So looking back on Jack's journey, my journey, my brothers, and even Sickle Bros all together, I can't help but think of the butterfly effect. If I had not gotten hired at the high school that I'm at now, would Jack have ever been rescued? If Jack had never been rescued, would we have dove so deeply into the fish hobby that we loved as kids? And if we didn't dive so deeply into the fish hobby, would Cichlid Bros even be a thing? It really makes me proud of the journey we've been on for the last six years and really just shows how much one fish could change lives. So Jack's legacy will certainly live on in my classroom and on this channel, and it may be influencing a major project that I'm working on in my classroom right now. I really appreciate you sticking around for this long and watching, and swim in peace, Jack.